Hi there. Today, let's stay up to date with current affairs while improving your English, focusing on the topic of obesity as covered in the UK news. This is an article from The Guardian newspaper in the UK, published on the 4th of December. Cost of people being overweight in UK, now 98 billion study fines. That's a lot of money and that's a big problem. Today, we'll be working on your English skills in a way that's suitable for IELTS and other English exams. Understanding and discussing complex topics like health. So we're looking at the story behind the news headline. And if you stick around until the end of this podcast, I'll be talking about how some traditional ideas around weight loss are probably not the best ways forward. Are you still counting calories? Are you still doing low fat? Listen until the end if you are. And why should this matter to you as an English language learner? Well, because it's about more than just the language. It's understanding British culture and the issues that shape British society. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. What we like to do at Adept English is to give you a mix of content, a variety, like a box of chocolate. Valuable practice at understanding everyday English. There are hundreds of Adept English podcasts. You can find them on YouTube or Spotify. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you really want to speed up your learning, you can download our podcast bundles, 50 podcasts at a time. Go to our website, adeptenglish.com to find out how. So let's unpack this headline some more. Cost of people being overweight in the UK, 98 billion study fines. That is a staggering amount of money. And this study is from the Tony Blair Institute in the UK. The link is in the transcript if you're interested. Let's look at vocabulary first. What does the word overweight mean? Well, it's a compound word, over, O-V-E-R, and weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, and it just means that you weigh too much, you're too heavy if you're overweight. And the abbreviation 98BN means 98 billion. A billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N, that is a lot of money. Billion, it means a thousand million. So it's a figure with nine zeros on the end. And the word that you often hear in the context of this discussion is obesity, O-B-E-S-I-T-Y. We talk about the obesity crisis. So obesity is the noun and the adjective for people who suffer from obesity is obese, O-B-E-S-E. And it's actually a technical term. It means specifically people who have a body mass index above a certain level, 27 to 30. If your BMI is over that, then we would term that obese. From the NHS website in the UK, it's estimated that around one in every four adults and one in every five children aged 10 to 11 are living with obesity. From the Tony Blair Institute report again, obesity has several impacts on individuals, including an increase in the risk of diseases like type 2 diabetes and cancer. And of course, there are many more negative health effects. So the headline is describing the actual financial cost. It says the cost is £63 billion to people personally. So that's in things like lost income. £19 billion cost to the NHS. I'm surprised it's not actually more than that. And the cost to society is estimated at £15 billion, meaning in things like lost productivity. A record 2.4 million people are now too sick to work because of obesity or being overweight. 
productivity, P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-V-I-T-Y, that's a noun and it's an economic measure. How efficiently do we produce goods and services in our country? That's our productivity. And of course, this directly affects the wealth of a country and its economy. Few people want to be overweight and the health risks are undeniable. It seems to me that the science is now there to help us understand this issue much better. What information is needed to help us understand why are people overweight and how can people lose weight? That's no longer mysterious. We know, in other words. It's interesting, there are a variety of medically and professionally qualified people, doctors or epidemiologists perhaps, who publish work online, publish books or speak in podcasts on matters related to the obesity crisis. Some names to look out for, some of my sources in other words, Dr. Robert Lustig, Tim Spector of course. Dr. Rongon Chatterjee's YouTube channel is also a good source. Dr. William Lee, that's L-I. Dr. Chris Van Tulliken, Jesse Onshaspey, and Dr. Pradi Jamnadas. These are all names to look out for in this field. And these people and their thoughts all point broadly in the same direction as far as obesity and associated ill health effects are concerned. And they're broadly aligned on the best ways to lose weight too. And yet the official advice, like that given by the NHS, is out of date. You know my thoughts on this perhaps from previous podcasts. The NHS is wonderful at certain things, but lifestyle advice, not so much. And in fact, the NHS still recommends that low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet. There is evidence which is accumulating around the changes that we can make to our diets to avoid obesity or to tackle weight problems. This isn't me saying it, I'm not a scientist, but I'm just passing the information on and encouraging you to do your own research. An example, it's very clear that there's far too much refined sugar in most of our diets. Official advice worries about tooth decay, but the harms done by sugar are much greater than that. Our consumption of sugar just goes up and up. It's quite addictive and it's become normalised. Normalised means it's so common that we think it's normal, even though it's not. If you celebrate Christmas, for example, just think of the amount of refined sugar that celebrating Christmas tends to mean for most of us. The festive season brings huge health harms with it. Sugar is much worse for our health than we ever thought it was. And for many of us, there's not only too much sugar in our diets, but also too much carbohydrate as well. That's C-A-R-B-O-H-Y-D-R-A-T-E. That means bread, rice, potatoes, pasta. Again, this is normalised, but it's a huge part of why people might struggle with their weight. High carbohydrate food is cheap and it's prominent in our supermarkets. High carbohydrate food is also what we crave. That's C-R-A-V-E. And if you crave something, it means you have a very strong feeling of wanting it. Bread, cakes, biscuits, pasta, sweets. This is what many people are drawn towards. These foods are hard to resist and they're plentiful and cheap. And then there's what I call the vilification of fat, F-A-T, especially saturated fat. If you vilify something, that's V-I-L-I-F-Y or the noun vilification. To vilify means that you give it a bad name, you condemn it, perhaps unfairly. It appears that saturated fat is not the enemy. And there's actually some suggestion that the negative messages about fat were put out by the sugar industry in the beginning. That sounds like a conspiracy theory, doesn't it? But apparently there is evidence for this. A lot of harm has been done by that belief that low fat is good. 
Many low fat products are high in carbohydrate and high in sugar, and they should be avoided, we're now told. For most of us eating a Western diet, there's also not enough fibre in our diet. That's F I B R E. If you eat a piece of fruit as a whole fruit, yes, you're consuming sugar, but you're also consuming quite a bit of fibre with it. If you eat it in its natural state, a plain old apple, for example, the fibre means the effect of the sugar is far less harmful than it is in foods that have fruit in them but are processed. Fibre gives you protection against sugar, in other words. And this is the way our bodies have evolved to eat fruit. But if you eat fruit that's been processed, or worse still, you drink fruit juice or even fruit smoothies, this isn't what nature intended, even though we might think of those things as healthy. Actually, you're often consuming a huge amount of sugar in these fruit drinks without the corresponding amount of fibre that makes it safe. And this brings me on to another topic, the harm caused by ultra-processed foods or UPFs. I started to cover this in podcast 665. This area of study, of focus, is very current. Our bodies have evolved to process food in its natural state. And yet, in many Western diets, at least 50% of our food is ultra-processed. This is harmful. Also relevant, the harm done by the belief that it's exercise that helps us maintain a good weight rather than our food. If you've ever been on a running machine at the gym and you've looked at the number of calories you've burnt in your 20-minute run, you'll probably have been disappointed. It might be the same as a couple of biscuits or maybe just one biscuit. It's a myth that you can exercise your way out of a poor diet. Exercise is important and very good for you. But weight loss isn't one of the reasons to exercise, it turns out. Fasting, I've spoken about before on the podcast, that is also a very powerful tool. There are plenty of health reasons to restrict your eating to certain windows in the day. And finally, calorie counting. Calorie counting is no longer seen as the way to lose weight. The old saying, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. This belief that it's calories that count comes from the work of Wilbur Atwater. He was an American chemist working in the late 1800s when science first learned that we could burn food to measure the amount of energy it contains. The science has moved on rather since the late 1800s, I'm pleased to say. And measuring food by the number of calories it contains is out of date, despite the popularity still of calorie-restricted dieting. What happens inside your body when you consume fat or sugar or plant foods It's completely different. Calories are not what matters, not a useful way of understanding food, not a useful way to try to diet and lose weight. So this advice, particularly low fat and high carbohydrate diets for years and years and years hasn't worked. It's not helped improve people's health or their weight. But we're fortunate now we live in a time where there's advice that comes from new science that does actually work. So I've included some links in the transcript. And if you're interested, I can cover these topics in greater depth in 2024. Just let us know. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.